Okay, this next question comes from Gabriel Suarez. Question they asked, do I make a natural life stores brand that is literally natural life products branded identical as the chain of stores or do I make a separate brand and make this other brand our house brand that is sold across all locations as the natural life brand but is not branded natural life? Why would I want to do one versus the other? I see examples of both out there and can't figure out why one may be a better fit for me. Description is I have a small chain of retail stores and they began uh, franchising. We have a total of five locations with two more opening in 60 to 90 days as any retail chain would need, as any retail chain, we need a house brand, but question is how do we market slash brand this line of products? Okay. Well, the first thing that kind of comes into my head is GNC. You know, I think GNC might have their own line of products, but then they also resell other line of products. Um, I'm not real familiar with the supplement stays, uh, supplement stores, but I'm also kind of thinking about maybe the vitamin stores and how some of them might be their own. I don't know. You know, Gabriel, this is a great question. I'm not an expert in that retail space, so I'm not sure I could give you the, the, the best type of feedback, but let me think for a second. I think it, I guess it would just really matter if you think that whether or not you can put together enough uh, in-house branded products that you can sell in your store and it would support your store revenues. You know, my mind also really quickly, as I was talking, I was thinking about other brands, you know, and Apple came to mind. You know, when I go to Apple, I'm coming there for Apple store products, but they also have other products in their store that was developed that are developed to work with Apple products, even though they didn't make them. It certainly sounds like it would be worth it to create a store that may be known for certain core products, yet you can sell other products that might be complementary without you having to go out there and continually develop your own line of products uh, horizontally. I also think about, you know, I'm, I'm an investor in a handbag line called Hammett. And if you go into the Hammett store at the mall, which he only has one pop-up store, it's all Hammett products. There's no other products. And Hammett has a complete line of products, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 different handbags and, and, and supplemental type accessory type products, and it's all Hammett. When I go into the Gap, I'm thinking those are all Gap products. Um, when I go into Whole Foods and I'm gonna buy vitamins, um, you know, Whole Foods has their own branded line of products, but they have others. It sounds to me like this might be a conscientious decision that you get to make as an entrepreneur of what's going to be best for you. I personally don't see any situation being a best or worst. I simply see you making a decision as an entrepreneur of what best fits your brand. And you're starting to get to a juncture in, in the cycle of your business with five locations and probably lots and lots of different customers where it might make sense to hire a marketing person or a marketing consultant agency to start surveying your existing customers to figure out what they see you as. Sometimes we get tunnel vision as entrepreneurs and we and we lose track sometimes of our customers and what they're what they perceive us as. And it's called doing a 360 degree review of our business. And maybe it would make sense to start talking to more of your customers and getting the perception from them of what they want to see at their store, what they would like to see, what they perceive you as in the marketplace today, why they shop with you, um, those, those types of things. You're getting to a point where you, it might make sense to start making those investments. Uh, and Paul uh, Schoonover, one of the mentors here in the group, I believe he has a market research uh, department at his company and he could probably help you with that. But I, to answer your question, 
I think it's like when, you know, I'm a wine collector and I, I drink a lot of, of wine, not every night, but I drink wine. And people always ask me, what's the best wine? And I always answer, the best wine is the wine that's in my glass because I know that whatever I put in my glass, I'm going to enjoy or I'm going to be trying something new and I may or may not like it. And if I don't like it, I spit it out. And if I do like it, I ask for another glass. But wine is subjective. And I think in this situation, it sounds like the business model that you're looking to create is subjective. And this is one of the fun things about being an entrepreneur, uh, deciding the future for your company. And sometimes what you might think of doing today might not work for five years, but you pivot in five years. Uh, so I, I know that's not you know a definitive answer and it'd be nice sometimes to say, do this and this is why, but this is a very subjective term. And I would, if it were me and my business, I would lead with the thought of my customer in mind first. And I, I wanna make sure that I keep that customer happy, keep them coming back, and finding out if they care if I have non-branded products in my location or if they only want to come to us for our line of products. All depends on the way you're branding yourself. Hope that helps. Thanks, man.